Good morning, Dick Rochford. Aboard uh, M600 311 Mike X ray. And we've got some weather today, mostly uh, to the northwest. So we're avoiding most of it, as we can see. But I wanted to talk a little bit about how to operate uh, in the presence of visible moisture in the areas where you're operating. And it occurs to me the best way to do that is to use all the tools at your disposal. Kent City Center, that means NEXRAD, which is indeed a radar, but it's processed, so it's delayed frequently more than 10 minutes. Now this is uh, the delivery time here of two minutes. But the other problem is the, uh, not just the delay, but the resolution. And you can see, if we zoom in on this a little bit, you can see it gets pretty blocky. And that's because the resolution is, I believe, 2,000 meters, which is not enough to operate tactically in that area. And then those of you who have operated color weather radar know this is the vertical profile of the color weather radar. And color weather radar or black and white weather radar shows us real-time moisture. Now this is adjusted uh, to be looking at ground only on the outer quadrant. What uh, some of you may recognize is Archie Trammell's parked position. I'm less concerned about tilt angles than I am about distance. 40 seems to be 40 nautical miles. Seems to be the limit as far as usability on this. And depending on what you're trying to see and so on, it could be that you want to use, you know, a, a different scale, 80 or so. But at that point, if you were to do that, uh, the, the ground gets harder to paint. And you start seeing holes out there, so 40 is the number I like. Doesn't mean you can't use more, it's just uh, really we are not needing to see anything beyond 40 miles. So we're moving faster than the weather, so we can easily turn away from it in time. So the two views are horizontal view in the parked position. So if I tilt that down a little bit, I get more ground in the paint. Anything that marches in at us could be weather and is worthy of some further investigation. We do that by going to the vertical mode. And now we're looking for symmetry top to bottom. And honestly, if there's any rain in that paint, it's so light as to not be a problem. We're at minus 14 C outside air temperature. But we're not in visible moisture at this time. That tells me that we don't have any real threats. But my rule is plus 10, minus 20 in the presence of visible moisture, not only prop heat, stall heat per the aircraft schedule, but also prop heat. Since we don't have visible moisture, we don't have the prop heat on right now. Just for flying along looking for weather, we want to go back to the vertical profile, or correction, the horizontal view, and compare that to NEXRAD. Radar is tactical. NEXRAD is uh, simply for long-range planning, strategic call it if you want. <clears throat> so if you spot a rain shower that's worthy of going around, and by that I mean a rain shower that's more than light green, if dark green, yellow, or red on the radar, you want to consider going around it. If it's 
producing lightning, consider staying at least 20 miles away. And if you can ascertain the tops of the clouds that is producing the lightning, which we have that capability here when it exists, we'll want to stay uh, that distance in miles as it is thousands of feet tall. Tops to 30, stay 30 away. Tops to 40, stay 40 away. My go-to people tell me that tops to 25 or higher can produce hail. Or, correction, lightning. And tops to 35 can produce hail. So that's the reason for those distance rules. Uh, it's also true that going an extra 5 or 10 miles around, what you think is safe visually, um, can't hurt. It's not going to take that long. I've got a message here. So the message is possible severe weather ahead. This is referring to these BVR bars back here beyond visual range. Meaning there might be something back there um, that we could see if we ranged out. I wait for the weather to come to me. That's because then I have uh, more knowledge uh, uh, you know, when the radar is operating 40 miles out, you have better resolution than you do at 60 or 80 miles. So now that looks like it could be weather. So let's check it out. Go to the vertical profile. Now we're looking for asymmetry in the paint. And again, I'm not necessarily seeing asymmetry. I see what could be higher terrain here. Next rat tends to... Uh, agree in that there is no activity on the next rat out here and probably hasn't been for some time. So that's pretty much it. So we've got next rat, we've got radar. This is delayed, but we have it over a wider range of places. Radar is real time, 186,000 miles per second. Not just a good idea, it's the law. Albert Einstein said so. And ways of seeing weather uh, that truly could be injurious to us in real time. That's the value of radar. We also have storm scope. And we have data link lightning which are the real-time slant, uh, delayed, long-range products for electrical activity. That if it were here, we'd be talking about it, but it's not. So that's subject for another video. Really, it's just that simple. Uh, we'll keep looking at this one since it tends to be on or near our track. And we'll do that by continually evaluating as we get closer whether or not that's uh, really going to be a problem for us. There's 20 mile. It's not on there yet. So that's how we're going to do that. Tick Rochford, fly safely. Train off it.